Welcome to 91 Reasons, a pop culture fueled rocket into the far reaches of nerd culture. Featuring your hosts, Jeff, Rachel, Luna, Austin, and Josie, it's Tucker time. You're listening to 91 Reasons, a journey into the twisted landscape of pop culture. Keep your hands and arms inside the podcast at all times. And now, The Voice, Jeff Tucker. following takes place between 3 a.m. and 4 a.m. The 91 Weezons Homestuck Gigapause is over. Yes, the hiatus is gone. Did Finally. you miss us? We were gone a whole week. We are back. Why, why were we gone? Do you remember why? Why we didn't, we didn't do an episode last week. Do you know why? You're staring at me blankly. <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, we opened a new ride at Knott's Berry Farm, so I was there uh, 17, 18 hours a day. So the uh, we, we simply could not fit time in to do a show. So we took a week off. We're back. It's episode... 24? Like Jack Bauer. Like Jack Bauer. Boop, beep, boop, beep. Okay, so... Wait, no, no. You know oh, what this means? What? That means there's over 24 hours worth of our content. Yeah. It means you can go a whole day, nonstop. Just listen every episode, binge watts. Yes, binge listen. Ah, yes, You could pour a bowl of cereal and listen so long that you'd pour another bowl of cereal the next morning. (laughs) Think about that. Wow. 24 plus hours of homestuck goodness. I am Jeff Tucker. I am the voice of 91 Reasons. I am joined, as always, by our resident Homestuck experts, who are... Austin. Luna. And thanks to Patreon pledger Vriska, who once again forced me to sit down. I almost finished all of Act 2. Where did I end? Dave just uh, opened up the attic and the pile of Smuppets fell out. The pile of Smuppets fell out. And I have to ask why... uh, Excuse me. I have to ask... Where were we when it ended? Because why? Because I fell asleep. You fell asleep. Because that guy started <laughs> messing around with his his um, inventory again. Silidex. His Silidex. Over you you reach up to your Silidex gods. <laughs> and what was what was the thing you were trying to explain? He has the machine and he's yes. he's duplicating. You put your capture cards actually have capture codes on them, so they're called that. You put that code in the machine, you can stamp cards with uh, holes in your punch dot matrix. And if you, you can use those to make totem labs, which you can put on an alchemeter that will cost grist, which will create copies of the object. But he hasn't used any of those objects. Why no. would you need a copy? Uh, wait, uh, wait, why would you need a copy of an item that you haven't used? There's an extra use for it later on. You'll <coughs> see, see by, is it by the end of the act or early next act, I think it is. The, the 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 whole alchemization thing is for something. You can do an extra thing with the cards. Is it's, it is it too. does it involve Dave Strider's sick beats? <laughs> <laughs> You, you will finally introduce the more of Dave's store. You got to see yeah. his household with Blow and all his wonderful um, puppets. Hey, anything's better than watching John Egbert dork around his house, <laughs> avoiding Harlequins, and listening to that woman prattle on about, I've just thrown a bathtub at you, John. <laughs> and he's like, why, why did you do that for? You don't throw a bathtub no. through the... I mean, nothing uh. happens with this guy. At least Strider is like... Should I do this? Should I do that? Mm-hmm. Did I make a, 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 an episode of Saw by killing the puppets? <laughs> At least something happened. Mm-hmm. I'm still not convinced that anything's going to happen. We haven't even met any you trolls. Get in the game. Trolls are Act 3. We're like three or four hours into this thing, and nothing has happened. <laughs> nothing. It's Homestuck is in sections. Acts one through four is just the kids messing around. Then that leads into the Act five section, which is <coughs> trolls, and then Act six, which is the next arc, and then Act six, Act six, which is in the final arc we're in right now. Well, 
I am doing my due diligence as a homestuck father, which means I have no features on my face and a lot of shaving cream, apparently. <laughs> what did you just do to me at the store? You put a, a fedora on my head and told me I was what? That egg boy. I mean, you were buying saving cream. You had two bottles of saving cream in the cart. Yeah, and I put a hat on, and I had no yeah. features, and I was just Dad a Egbert. Just a nose. Just a nose. And Mom has just lips. <laughs> bro, bro, and Grandpa also have distinguished features. You'll see. Well, we we appreciate the uh, support of Vriska and uh, the Patreon pledge. I am I am slogging through it. I still owe. What a, a half hour you said on yeah, Act Two? Forty-five minutes. This is this is where you get hooked, though. Yeah, this is the, an, an, another new character. Yeah, another new character. Ooh, oh, yeah, this is on before. This is yeah. You said it was a wayward, a wayward vagabond. vagabond. The yeah, the guy in the desert with the computer. But well, what's his deal? He doesn't have a Silidex. He has to manually pick things up. So he spends the whole act picking things up. Oh, <laughs> I'm not gonna watch. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. You have to. Eh? Now, Whiskers you, mind controlling you. You have to. This is—is is this the guy that you dressed up as at Comic Con? No. no, no. That was a different exile. You mean? You were aimless four. renegade. Act three. Act three. Aimless renegade. Yeah. Yes. He's, he's, he's not a wayward, wayward vagabond. Would they? Those mean the same thing almost. <laughs> aimless and wayward are pretty close. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to continue our Homestuck adventure. How many acts has Colab created? They just uploaded Act 6, what? Intermission 5? Intermission 4, I think they're on. Wait, so basically no, you're no, saying intermission three. you're saying this is my life for the next year and a half is what Pretty you're much. saying. Because by the time I get to the end, if, if Riska still wants me to watch this, by the time I get to the end, it'll be like a train laying track somewhere down the line. Like, oh, no, no, there's more track. Yeah. Keep going. <laughs> oh, do you think we were finished? <laughs> oh. But you get hooked. It gets better. Like, you'll be amazed at how amazing Act 5 Act 2 is. I can't wait. I want to meet Dante Basco. I want to see Hussy yeah. in the Strip. Yeah, I want to yeah. meet Car Cat and. What is the first self-insertion? Vriska. Oh, it's act. Um, no, it's no, it's Act Four. But Act Three, you get a sneak peek. Wait, wait, yeah. wait, wait, wait. Did you say self-insertion? Yeah. It, can you use the word cameo? No. No, self-insertion. That's is the way self-insertion is way too. That's a double entendre. That's dirty. <laughs> the command is a h in, indulge in what is it? Hmm. It, it's indulgence. Oh, Highly something self, highly indulgent self insertion. Oh, that's so awful. Like that. The first command he shows up as a problem sleuth, and it's AH become homoerotically interested in your fans. Oh, no, no, no. What's oh. going on? <laughs> Dude, that, if, if you want to find out, you'll have to watch Problem Sleuth, which is a whole other amazing adventure. Did Colab do that? A little bit. A little bit. Okay. Welcome now, to Problem okay. Sleuth, was, episode one. Like they jailbreak and it's Senior yeah. Pac-Man the entire way through. Senior now, Pac-Man. Problem Sleuth starts with a guy in his office picking up items with his inventory running around. Yeah. But by the end, it's amazing. You've already lost me. Mm-hmm. You've already lost me. I'm a, I, I probably have mentioned this before on the show, but like... Crack did a, 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 a photoplasty. It was, what if video games were more authentic? And the guy from Grand Theft Auto, remember that picture? Oh, oh, guns on he had back. every single weapon like on his back. <laughs> he looked like a, a turtle made of artillery. So I get the, the joke about the inventory and if you uh, want to carry this, you can't carry that. I mean, that was the whole thing of Resident Evil. Remember playing Resident Evil? It was the first game, I think, that you had to combine items. Yeah. You, had to, you had to put the plant with this to make the first aid and do this to that. And at one point I was like, as much fun as I'm having on this game, I, I didn't show up to like combine things. I don't want to <laughs> combine things. Now, John combined the saving cream, remember? The two Bulbasaur cans. He put them together to make room. Yes, yes. You combine the uh, arms of the cake and smash his own inventory into it. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Thank God. <laughs> well, again, thank you to Vriska for supporting the show. If you'd like to support the show in any way you can, uh, go to patreon.com, P-A-T-R-E-O-N, and uh, you can uh, pledge as little as a dollar. Every dollar goes to help the show. Uh, thanks for all the Homestuck fans who are leaving reviews on iTunes. Uh, it's very kind of you. Thank you. If you haven't, please go to iTunes and leave us a five-star review. It helps us in our search listings. Uh, I'm going to turn you now over uh, to Austin and Luna, who, who told me right before the taping of this show that they have nothing to talk about. I know. We, I think I think what you should talk about, and this is just me, is you said somebody took you guys to task uh, for your theories on the last episode. 
Oh, yeah, they got a lot of... So you've got a lot of rebuttals there. So I'll be back a little later to do some wrap-up. But uh, take it over, Austin. All right, so we are in the middle of a hiatus where nothing is happening. I know, amazing. No updates, no nothing. And we didn't get a big flash cliffhanger, you know? Nope, it was sort of just like a pay. It's a... Oh, wait, I'm not gone yet. Uh, oh. I'm sure in the midst of this hiatus... You could just spend time playing Hive Swap because it's supposed to come out, right? Oh yeah! Oh yeah. In, yeah! yeah! Oh yeah! They put up some um, uh, interviews on their uh, what pumpkin page, like meet the team sort of things. All I can say is he really should have put up a video that's like, it's Andrew Hussey and it's done in like really a crude Flash animation. It's like <laughs> you go to release the Hive Swap game and you knock off three other games and you'll release Silidex. <laughs> and like he just keeps trying to upload the game and it keeps knocking out of his Silidex. That's what I would do. All right, it's all yours. <laughs> well, well, do you think Hive Swap will have Silidexes? Will we finally get to pick up items in inventory. Well, and one, yes, we do because there's pictures. We don't know if it's going to be a goofy system, but the inventory is drawn to look like a Silidex. Yeah, but probably I won't have gameplay repercussions. But sound act three, you actually do get to mess around with it. Hey, so that already why? happened. Real quick, just make sure that that keeps doing that, okay? If it stops doing that, you're not recording. <laughs> so that's all you gotta do. All right, so in the hiatus of nothing happening, um, we have a com- the community all going on Sky that Dino. Luna Hill has been obsessed real, real with. Arg. You have been obsessed with this. It's all you do all day is go on the computer and look the, up this all. Most people already know about it, but the really, really quick version is a website showed up at skya.io, and it asked for a code. And we found Curiously Existential, a Tumblr user and an admin of Misparp, and found out that him and all the other Misparp admins are putting together a new roleplay site of some sort, and that if you want to get into the beta, there's a hundred codes hidden on the internet. Now, uh, some of them um, we had to um, decipher from uh, coding in the page source. Some of them were hidden at obscure websites and stuff. Really weird, like... Uh, a lot of it went down to RPTC, the Miss Part Ban Room, is a whole separate website with its own hidden stuff. There was some hidden in sound files if you decrypted them correctly. Um, the one they're after right now as we're recording is if you go on Miss Parp and go onto the Not Safe for Work tag, someone is role-playing and they're actually in on it. And if you role-play not, role play not Safe for Work with them and say the magic word, whatever it may be, then they give you the code. See, it's all a trap. There's a, there must be a point when you're well playing not safe work with this mod to get this code when you realize, why am I doing this? <laughs> it's all just a trick to well play not safe work, Miss Pop. You know it is. You're, you're, you're falling victim to their mm-hmm. plan. Their master evil Miss Pop plan. <laughs> I, I'm sure it's like a not safe work Gamqueous because they're obsessed with Gamqueous for some reason. Um, but moving on to all um, from Skya.io, wasn't it leaked what it was already? Yes, for the people who did get already get in and got a little bio that the creators said it's fine to leak out. It says that it's an overseer type project, which you don't know is a text based. It's a suburb, almost that all of suburb is on there, but it's all text based. This is a sort of almost graphic version of it, but it's also got D and D elements with dice. Huh. And it's also got gigapause.com elements where it's also a social media site. The stage one that he's going to beta test is Dream Bubbles. It's everyone's in the Dream Bubbles together, and you can, it's a normal, it's like a forum chat plus dice based roleplay game. Sounds interesting. Huh. It's just a really weird thing, and I can see why they need to test it. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, it, it, it just sounds like gigapause.com, but, huh. A lot less open gigapause.com. Yeah, a very strict. Yeah, you gotta role play the re- real stuff here. Yeah, the only they 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 know you know that they wanted to be serious role play because he said the only way to get into the beta is to spend all day hunting down a super secret code hidden on the internet. And if you're have you have enough free time to do that, then you have enough free time to be in the beta. And you had to actually um, computer hack this and break in illegally. No, 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 he didn't do those. No. He, he said for a while he thought about making it, uh, putting up uh, empty websites and servers, and he said the only way to get the code is to hack them. But he decided against it, and now it's mostly misparp stuff hidden on wiki pages. One was on fanfiction.net in a uh, really bad smut fiction, and certain letters or numbers were capitalized. Huh. I, I, I don't know if, I, if I'll go on this website. I mean, I like role-playing, but 
I don't like having all these fancy rules and things. You know, I just don't like it being open to improv yeah. while play. The other, the, the suburb game looks much more promising. There was also yeah. they had a beta release th- this week. It's um, he's re- making a RP system on that- Unity, and his RP system is you actually run around as a sprite mode, almost almost Paper Mario ish. It looks amazing. It's yeah. always what I envisioned Hive Swap would be. You it's know? fully customizable. You can put in your own images to make your own lands and stuff and make collisions for them. And someone gets to be the client and move stuff around and spawn imps and stuff. And you can, it's I, mostly for role play. There's no real goal. I, I think it's brilliant that they did the image thing. You can just insert whatever you want. In. You can make yeah. sprite seats on image goal and just pop them right yeah. in. This week, they re- he released the beta oh, for the, for the mm. um, hmm? he released the beta for the character creator. So you can go on and create your own characters and save them. You get to see the cl- how the class system is set up. Different classes and aspects give you abil- abilities to use in game and stats. And you just see the really cool menu, and it really looks like suburb. It looks really, really impressive. Now, is this gonna go home strife style? Will he present this to what pumpkin? I don't think so. This is just his thing. Well, what pumpkin? Home just... strife didn't present to what pumpkin. What pumpkin went to them and told him to stop. Is what pumpkin gonna go to this guy and tell him to stop? There's no talent at this point. I think they're a little preoccupied with high swap right now. Yeah, they haven't talked to fans much at all. But I mean, there's nothing stopping him from making it and releasing it. Yeah, it's not like he can't do this. And it's odd the things Waitzel goes for and the things he doesn't go for. Like, see, so he didn't like home strife because it looked a fissile, right? Because mm-hmm. it had the home stuck name on it. But you know what else looks a fissile and has been around for years and is very professionally done? Hmm. Homestuck play sense. He doesn't have a problem with that at all. Oh, yeah. That's the Gary's Mod stuff. That's just an add on. It's not its own thing. Okay. Hmm. But yeah, there hasn't been much fan action yet. So he, doesn't, he doesn't tweet pictures of a contraband anymore. <laughs> I, I, we still go to cons. I'm blocked from her, so I don't, I don't see her stuff much. Oh, poor, poor yeah, Rando. At least Rando is. I can <laughs> log off from Rando and see her stuff or look on my phone. If she's listening to this podcast, he already knows the whole Rando thing. <laughs> this is 24 hours in, so they're dedicated to find us. <laughs> I'm so IPGG's listening. I sent PewKind the link to the podcast as Rando, so... Maybe wow. they'll start playing at the Hive Swap Studios. IPGD is currently scrolling through Hussey Twitter still, reading every last bit of info. Oh, yeah. And catching up on the latest fact stuck updates. <laughs> so, when we released the last episode, what were the problems in the comments? Here we go. I have them up on my phone right here. Oh, th- okay. Here we go. Um, this um, Magic Mango Mad says, he quoted, no important things in that update. says, are we reading the same comic? Okay. That was the Whiska and Twezzy updates. Mm-hmm. The Scourge Sisters. Yeah, I don't like Scourge Sisters. I never cared for them. The story arc is dumb. We're going to get back. A lot of of stuff from the comics for just me saying that right now. But I don't like their story arc. I don't like them. I just find them unlikable. The way they're written, they just don't likable, you know? They aren't relatable, really. And they're kind of just jokes to the other characters. The new Tuezi from the newer timeline just rubs off as kind of selfish. I could just write them off and bring in uh, Teal Tang's Scourge Sisters. We'll be good. Yeah, there you go. There you go. I mean, I, I, I'm angry that the last few years of the comic have been focused on them entirely mm-hmm. when you have much more interesting characters. Even right now, you have like characters like John and Roxy talking, and then you go right back to Trezzy and Briska, and it's like something entirely mm-hmm. different, you know? I've never really found them interesting, and they feel like they just kind of slow the plot down when we get to them because I've never really cared for their plot, you know? Okay. Here, here's um, someone else in the comments. This is... Um... Camlin Domino 88 and they say wow kind of early actually okay I'm, uh, uh, totally disagree about Riska being a villain here she was never a villain to begin with an antagonist maybe but an anti-hero for sure but not a villain Hussey was having her form spring and never intended her to be a villain um, blah 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 what she said about Jake is true he's weak and useless he says that what he says what he says about Jake is true he's weak and useless well um yeah <laughs> someone okay okay Someone does not like Jake English. Someone doesn't like Jake English. You have a Jake hater over here. Aussie would feel strongly about that. I know he goes on a lot about the Jake haters on his Twitter. Speaking of Jake, while looking through the Miss Parp thing, um, uh, I was on the Miss Parp forums, and it said it was just called Jake English Body Pillow. There's <laughs> a whole comment that's done by the Jake English Body Pillow. Wow. But Hussie, Hussie goes on about Jake Apologist a lot. Mm-hmm. Was he going to have a Jake Apologist party where they'd all wear Jake God 2 outfits in one around? Uh-huh. He invited IPGD and uh, Toby. Remember this on Twitter? Mm-hmm. I just... I can't believe Hussie. And then he posted another image that was... It was the Yellow Sues. He was going on about Toby Sues. 
Yeah. And he said, you know, I was supposed to Toby Sue's. Everyone's fave with a pixel of Jake Inglis. Yep. <laughs> it's not even a canon sprite of Jake Inglis. Yeah. It's the god tier standing up, which is Neville Sonnen comic. The party hussy's gonna wear Jake Inglis. Yeah. Oh, okay. IPG's gonna bring the body bag. Oh my god. Um, Pokemon Tom 09 says, this is the first episode I've disagreed with pretty much everything you guys recapped and or speculated. Oh, that's <laughs> harsh. <laughs> okay, so the whole whisk of villainous, where do you stand on this? Luna. Huh? Whiska, villain, yes. No. Whiska, villain, yes. Well, she's she's unbalanced. She has the potential to not be a villain if a medium is found. BYB said it, had said it great for once. For once, BYB said it great. He fooled a lot now. He's yes. been doing really good lately. BYB's oh, practically redeemed himself here Punk with his good and New Vriska are the opposite ends of the Vriska spectrum, both equally villainy and bad. They yeah. need to find a medium, yes. and then everything will be fine. I, I completely agree there. But the what I used for evidence in the last episode, despite Whiska acting like a Homestuck villain, sees drawn like a Homestuck villain. You don't just draw characters in a silhouette like that. And we have a lot okay? of people. Okay, when it sees all dark and sat out, walking mm -hmm. up in uh, sees back. See, he looks like the Sobo Gamsy yeah. walking up. That's got to be a um, purpose callback. We have a lot of people on here talking saying um, about uh, that Rose did drink. She said then one line in the new update, and we said she didn't. Oh, okay. I I, I meant that she wasn't like. Drinking currently, I guess you as uh, oh, heavily drinking. It tended she to be a stop pretty line. early. It wasn't a plot point. Yeah, I think that's the, the case. It wasn't a plot point that she was drinking in this timeline. Yeah, she took a few drinks and then Whiska threw it on the ground. Yeah, and said you can't do this. Mm -hmm. it's, you know, the other woes, however, whole plot line was based and around then, it. Here's this Austin specifically. Oh, uh, oh boy, the car cat's different now. Well, what do they say on it? That he's not. What do you mean that he's not? He, he, at the beginning, he looked more like a passive car cat, but now we can see that he's pretty much normal car cat. No, he's an entirely different Winton car cat. Um, it's, he's not written differently. He's just got different attitude. Uh, the, the main line is saying that I don't want to be the leader anymore was, what does he say about breath? Mm -hmm. he what says, do you mean? He, he says some line about breath, about being not, he don't want to be a leader anymore. It's suffocating him, or you need some f from fresh air. I don't remember. I don't remember the line. But there's something about breath in there. But no, look, look, look. This car cat is an entirely different car cat. The way he's written compared to that of Act 5, Act 2 car cat is much different. That of Act 6 car really. cat. No. Because think about it. He never suspapped Gamzee. You keep saying that, but what does that mean? I don't, I, what does that matter? It means he never had the story of Moelgence with Gamzee. It also means that he never had any of the problems in his media. He never went to Chuezia and said, Look, I messed this up. I never said how to cross on you in the first place. I made a horrible mistake. These are all key moments in Karkat's story. Even if this is the same Karkat, how would he have changed without realizing his mistakes? I don't know. I feel like it's poor writing. Poor writing? Where, this Karkat... I don't know. I don't know how to feel about this. It's just that he missed out on so much, and we didn't see much of this car cat. I'm not attached to this character at all compared to the other car cat. I'm not going to continue reading the story seeing this is the same character. It is the same character. It's not the same character. He went through the Act 5 events. He did that. But he went through something entirely different. No, he didn't go through the Act 5 events. No, he didn't. Yes, he did. He never... No. <sighs> he had the exact same chats with Jade. But I know the that. The exact same chats with John. I know but he never realized his mistakes in Act 6. He never had Mina bound, which is one of the most important Carcat character development segments. When he talks about it, how he believed in the Condus, all that chat, what was the point of that? He talks to Mina how he was going to probably form a small army and go against Lord Inglis, thought about hopping off the media. Mm -hmm. He also mentioned that he respected the Condus as a leader and he got things done. And then... He goes to Twezzy and shows her up. What was the point of the Carcat showing up Twezzy scene? If this is a different Carcat and different Twezzy who never had those problems. That's a powerful scene in the comic that has no importance now. Do you see how dumb that is? Mm -hmm. You gotta see there's a problem here. No, you don't. No? Okay, we had an entire emotional scene where Carcat says to Twezzy, I just want you to be happy now and be your friend. Yeah. I really messed but up. But you didn't need to do that because Twezzy didn't reach that point. So the characters never that. had conflict. The story was never good in the first place. It's terrible. It's absolutely horrible. I, I think it's a really, really poor decision, but I think it's on purpose because we're gonna, he's going to somehow write 
the other Kaka and Trezzy back in via Dream Bubbles. No, you're, you're, you're dreaming. Then, then it's just poor writing. Then you can just say that Homestuck gets really bad at the end, but that's okay because what we got was good. Or you could just read through the comic just going, I mean, the, the writing's good right now. It's just that I can say I'm only attached to characters other than those characters, maybe? Because right now I have no attachment to Terezi or Carcat or any of these characters because they didn't go through the same experiences. H how do you feel about this? You're just okay with it. You're just going to roll with it. Yeah, I'm just going with it. The comic's no. taking weirder turns. No, it's not a weirder turns. It's Paul Whiting. No. I'm not happy with it. And then when Vriska starts talking about how they're going to go kill Spade Slick, Carcat just kind of stands there, has a sad thought, and then continues. I want Carcat to finally realize, no, you're not going to hold Spade Slick. He's our friend. We can walk with him to take down the Condis. Why isn't Carcat the leader here? Why doesn't he finally redeem himself as a leader? He's not a leader. He's given up. How, how come he doesn't go, hey, Vriska, this plan's terrible. I'm going to take control as leader. And I'm going to make so things go away. That can't happen yet. That's the, car, the end of Carcat's story. It, he yes. do that until the end of his story. This is supposed to be the end of Carcat's story. It's the end of, it's the end of Homestuck. He no. said there was only 400 pages left. No. He never said that. There's 400 pages to get somewhat halfway through this act. Ugh. And then we have um, two more acts to go. So you're saying we're going to get a whole Carcat sex and after this whole Whisker thing. It, that, you're, what you're saying of the car cat rising up moment could be two seconds of a flash of it goes da 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 and there's everyone dead and then car cat stands up with his big um, sickle and, goes, and the song goes da 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 and then everyone stands up again. That's it. That's his big moment. That's horrible. <laughs> that's that's the, all it takes. That's and not we, all it takes. No, stop. Shh, stop. Don't scream. Stop. Please don't scream. That is the worst most cruddy thing ever. Even if that happened with the Scorn Sisters, I'd be disappointing. Characters, I don't even care for the story arc. If they got a pay off, pay off that bad, I'd be disappointed. Did you see Spade Slick's payoff in Cascade? You know, if they're on the roof, that was like a two-second shot. And that was his whole storyline. It had line. dialogue. It had pulled the twiggle slick and all that. <laughs> it had... Oh, it was so good. And that wasn't the end of his story. It kept going. And he kept getting more scenes. That was just a really, really well-written scene with fantastic mm -hmm. art. There's a difference between Spade Slick on the rooftop being forced to suit Snowman. Hey, and then a final battle as a sprite mode call cat weighs the sickle. And then everyone gets healed or something dumb. Hey, I don't know what you just thought of. But hey, it might be the worst Homestuck flash I've ever seen. And this Renegade got his payoff in the Cascade Flash. Two seconds. He hit the button to blow up the dog thing and save the day, and then was killed two seconds later. Aimless Renegade gets, let's see, a <laughs> few hundred pages, but no dialogue. Cockhead gets thousands of pages of dialogue and memos that apparently now don't exist. You know, all of Mean Abound, all the chats with Gamzee that apparently don't matter anymore. All the anymore. chats with Gamzee? You mean one? <laughs> I think no, it's zero. He had zero chats with Gamzee <laughs> okay. after shush papping him. I think Call Cat Sus Papping Gamzee is a crucial moment to the comic. And the fact that you wet kind of out of existence... I don't rest see why that moment's more important. That's so important. I can kind of see me in a bound. But I don't see why the shish papping is so important. Whether that, does, whether that gets another payoff later again or not, that scene is important. Same with the Call Cat Trezzy scene when he shows her up. Those scenes don't have to have payoff. They don't have to mean something to the story. They're the humanity in the story. They're the characters we care for having tender moments and scenes that are really powerful. Carcat Gamzee was the worst pal ever. That's what made it, is that he finally rose up and realized that he, okay, it even tied into the Trezzy story. He finally realized what he, this Crossy on Trezzy was dumb, but sees his friend and he had to stand up and save her because Gamzee was hoarding his friends and that Gamzee, his other friends Carcat matter more. did not save Terezi. He failed miserably. But Shush papping him papping him right before Cascade didn't but, save Terezi three years later I think from the problem drunk. here with the new timeline is you're saying everything can go white but you're taking all the humanity out of the story. You're saying who cares about tender moments in important scenes? Because they are important to the plot. They don't move things forward. They're just dumb, romantic, or, or, or um, tender moments that we get thrown into the story. But they do matter. They're the characters we love. Having dialogue. And Carcat being human, which is kind of ironic because he's an alien. But that's what makes the story. And it's dumb to say that didn't happen. It's just See, dumb. This is the kind of stuff that I'd be scared of if we were complete serial readers since the beginning. Because this argument you have is exactly the argument people have every t single time a new part of Homestuck begins. 
What do you mean? The argument of, we don't care about these new guys. We want the old guys back. They were given the humanity of the story, the real character depth. Exactly what people said when the trolls were introduced, when the alpha kids were introduced, and now when the new retcon kids were introduced. But you don't understand. It was set up from Act 5, Act 2, that the characters would survive when the alpha kids came. The entire purpose was, hey, we're going to find a way to exist, whether these guys, we, whether Caucus, whether these chumps are here or not. And yet, now Hussie's completely written them off, and you're saying they're not going to go back into the story, as we're not going to get a dream bubble scene of the game over characters. Because you're saying they just don't matter anymore. Enough of them have, have already come back. He did Rose, he did Jasper Sprite, he's probably going to do Bro and Nana. You just, okay, I just said, here we go. I, did I really just say, oh my god, I want Cockhead back into the story, and you apply with, it's okay, Jasper Sprite's back into yes! the story? So we can have two Jasper Sprites, but not two Cockheads? No. The two Jasper Sprites are different enough that they can There's exist? There's only one car cat. Because his whole story arc is he's the only one of his kind. There are two car cats. I don't even know. No, no, no. You're missing the point. <laughs> You don't understand. We have to have these characters. Like, if I actually was a big fan of Torezi, I'd be really disappointed at what happened with her. Because she because had... she's not getting beat up? No. <laughs> yes, that's exactly Because this saying. new Torezi is completely selfish. You'd rather her be drunk and dying? No. And not blind? No. I'd rather her wise up and get her events on Gamzee. Well, Torezi, she did. She created a whole timeline where she gets got her revenge. I, I get it. Terezi is the, the seer of mind. Her entire... The retcon is her story arc. Well, she I guess... She fixed her life by fixing it in the past, which is the thing you can do in Homestuck. I guess that's why I don't like her story. <laughs> this is all part of her story arc. Well, I, I mean, I guess. I mean, I don't... Okay. We say the same thing for John and Roxy. Their story arcs involved going back and fixing things. But they're still John and Roxy. They had all the same past experiences they had. John still had that moment when he saw his dad dead and rose up against Beck and fought him. Well, he had to kiss Rose because he thought he could, well, he could revive her, you know? John still had all those tender, important moments in Homestuck. And you could go out on a limb and say some of them don't matter. I'm sure there's a few John pestilogs you could say, oh, that's unimportant, you know? But they are important. Whether John progressed in the game a suburb or not... There were probably a few chats he had that were important to his character. John is still the main character. This is still his story. Yeah. Everyone else is supporting. So you're saying it's okay to wipe Cock Hat and completely start from a new mm -hmm. Cock Hat. Why? Why are you saying this? Do you have no attachment to the characters? I, I, I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? You don't know. The characters never had the touching moments. This doesn't sock you in any way this doesn't it did i read them it happened but he retconned it with these new characters yes. and that's why the it's new writing it's not it's called... a... no 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 absolutely not delete stuff off the website it's still there it still happened this is all part of the story but then it will... i can't imagine reading this as a whole thing right now because you weave through all this fantastic story and you go this is really good and then you get to that one part where it says oh if you know that stuff you just went throw it out the window we'll start in flash here's a quick flash see of what happened act again five, act one see act six act one what do you mean with the scrats with the alpha kids yes no forget everything you knew we're starting over again we okay. saw jade break through the battle fourth wall we know they're okay though so we're okay with going with these characters. Hussey writes in the same loops over and over again since the dawn of Hussey writing. So following that, then you all believing what I said a few minutes ago, that the, the game over selves all somewhere on a dream bubble. Yeah, it's called Rose media. Sprite. And she's sitting right next to them. You can't use Rose as your only proof. What about the other characters? Vriska. Gonna, she's going to go beat up Vriska right now. What about Carcat, though? There's... Th Okay, I'll tell you this. Unless we get a walk around Flash, like some people are thinking, it, it the limited pages we have left, probably about 800. No, it's never going to end. <laughs> um, there's not enough time to dedicate that much time to the old Doom Cells because they do not, they're not important anymore. No. Remember, becoming no. okay. doomed is a meta thing. When you become doomed, you're not plot relevant. That's why you have a story arc about the game over characters realizing that you ha that you all have a reason to live. And they're all here for a reason, whether you're doomed or not. That should be the other Carcat storyline, then. That's what it should be. They just said, 
in the update, every single person agreed, yeah, Dave Sprite's dead, he doesn't matter. Oh, Dave Sprite doesn't matter, he's dead. Yeah, he never was the real Dave. That's why I want the older game over selves to go, no, Dave Sprite did matter, and we all play a part. And that's why the game over selves should be there. They should be the ones to stand up to the other See, selves. See, Riska's army of the undead that she just led into death and said they didn't matter. That's the problem. That's why one the character... The comic has been reoccurring over and over again that Doom selves don't matter, they're just... Uh, soldiers you can use up. There's the the only alpha ones matter. So that's why. And the problem is throughout the entire comic, there has never been someone saying otherwise. When that. you have plot devices like that, you have to have some to show you that it's negative. There's no character in Homestuck who is standing up for Dave Spryer, standing up for the ghost. Someone is. They, every single one agrees. Yeah, they're worthless. Which. And so, I don't know if Hussey's really going to go the route of they're not worthless, they will get their moment. Because That's what I want. Because there's no one in the comic to give them that moment. I want Cawcat, a doomed Cawcat to go, fine, I'll lead him. We all have a reason to live. you got to quote Bowman there. If Dave Sprite was still alive and he was there ranting about how he's important, I wouldn't have some giant theory post that Dave Sprite's going to go into the dream bubbles and lead an army of the dead against the alpha versions. But it's not happening. Hussey is stopping any voice of reason in the comic. There's only characters who are against the, like the, I mean, the, the Doom selves. They're all just agreeing with Whiskers here. Yeah, they're unimportant. But which is terrible. Is, now, that's, there's the question of the Homesick's the last segment now. Which direction is Hussey going in? Is he going the direction of that's all plot set up so that uh, the, the ghosts and will eventually get their rise to power? Or is that a meta thing to the fans saying there's a lot to juggle Please only pay attention to the alpha versions. It's all I can handle writing rise wise. They're the important ones. Focus on them. That sounds really lazy and bad. That sounds like he just wants to end it as fast as possible. So he wrote <laughs> this really dumb 500 page ending to quickly wrap things up by wet conning so nothing ever happened. That's poor writing and no. If he if he had, if he was going that route, he would have known it years ago and never have made me to bound. I mean, he made me to bounce the same time a hive swap. There had to be a reason he wrote that much dialogue for Cawcat, for Dave. He did to sell a video game. Now you're just saying Hussey's <laughs> in it for the corporate part, and he doesn't care about his characters, which is horrible, because yes, he does. The, you can't use the Mina Bound characters as an example of ca Hussey caring about his characters, because he literally took 12 characters that could have been important to the story and made them all Tumblr jokes in one page only. But... Okay, those are the alpha tools. They don't matter. Exactly. <laughs> those are 12 characters with complete backstories he wrote that potentially could be extremely important canon characters might the be. plot, and he wasted them as throwaways. They might be important, you know? But they seemed more like purposely... Oh, no, you once know, again, you know if they become... There's only enough time that if the Alpha Trolls become important, it's a one-page, they stand up and do something moment. There's not enough time for a full well, arc for them. Partly why I feel the Alpha Trolls were there is they were purposely cheesy to make the actual yeah. but characters feel from bad. A writing, from a writing stance, making a character purposefully cheesy is saying you can't juggle them all. And that leads more into the don't worry about them. They're, they're the non-canon versions. Only remember the main cast. Those were one-page jokes. But then you're saying uh, forget the main characters. I'm so, so lost. Why? No. No. Just absolutely not. Absolutely not. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Absolutely not. Just no. 100% no. Someone's going to stand up. Someone's gonna finally stand up against Whiska Who? and say these selves are important. Unless Dave Sprite's alive, I can't think of a single character in the entire comic. Who Jade. Would Jade's canon. She's sleeping right there. Normal Alpha Jade. You don't think Silgo? Hey, wait a second. Aren't these people important? No, because the, is from. What do you mean the, no? The story arc will only make sense if it's a not important character standing up for his own kind. Oh. Dave Sprite would work great if he's alive. Well. What about... Kankri might work as a one-page goof-off goof ending to the story arc because he's the sufferer, so he's going to stand for his people. No. But there's no way to make that serious. So you're just saying that, like, if we're lucky, we might get a glimpse of, like, the original Caw Cat as a doomed self in some random flask in the background. Um, the best bet to get him in is still a walk around because I don't see Hussey devoting any much panel time to this character who, unless he's going to pull something and make him a major character, like give him the ring or something. 
But I don't see why you'd do that. There's so much better use of your time. Use of panels. There's so point. much better use of your time than bringing one of your main protagonists back into the story. Well, there is when that main protagonist is sitting right in front of the main characters. You don't need a second one of him. Yes, you do. No, you don't. Yes, you do. You really don't. You really do. <laughs> what? Why do you, you think Rose Sprite showed up and normal Rose started breaking down like, this is it, there's no point to this. Paradox Base didn't plan for this because it's completely pointless. There's, there's no payoff for this. It's a joke. She literally said that. Yeah, but... but and That's more Hussey either setting up a story arc or Maida saying it's unimportant, don't worry about it. I just... I, I don't know. I mean, like... Uh, okay. The Seer of Light specifically told you, the reader, that this that these characters have no plot significance anymore. Ugh. So do you believe her or think Hussey's still going to pull a twist? Okay, so, like, think of Back to the Future. Uh-huh. Imagine if at the end of Back to the Future, when Marty said... Like, I mean, if they retconned his parents and the old parents never came back and he was just rich and famous forever, and whatever happened to the non-rich and famous Marty? Well, who cares? Or if it, he went to a um, a Wasteland alternate version with all these alternate versions and they were just written off after immediately and never worried about their new timeline again? Okay, full stop. Those alternate versions, that was the villain. He had to be written off because he's the villain. He's the Lord I'm talking, about, the I'm talking about the Marty who was in trade school across seas in the uh, a Vegas version. Okay, okay. You're talking about... There's another Marty out there who's just as important. He had just as much character development. But they're not talking. Why didn't he come back? But he didn't Why didn't get, all the different Marty show up in the end? He didn't get much screen time. Did he get any screen time? No, he's mentioned in one line of dialogue. Oh, come on! Care. You can't use that as proof. Well, he still went through the okay. same experiences. No! Imagine this. Imagine if this happened. Imagine if at the end of Back to the Future, Marty finally fixes the timeline, right? Oh. But he disappears from all of existence. Because there's a new Marty Some in the new Marty timeline. Did, did, that happened. But Except it was the new Marty that disappeared, not him. Imagine if it was the old Marty. There's just a new Marty, and the end movie ends with Marty going, Huh, I never had any problems in life. Oh, well. And this Marty never had any of the experiences he had by going back mm. in time. He never had any touching moments. He never had any important scenes. But, That's terrible. But if he had those experiences, then he would have made himself disappear. So... In that case, it, the, it would have been impossible to close the loop in a good way. Under those time travel conditions. But the time travel conditions of Back to the Future and Homestuck are different. Oh. Especially when you bring retcon into effect. Just just, just imagine this. Imagine if, they, imagine if right, the new Star Wars movie opens up. right, And there's Luke, all old. And the new guy walks up, right? And he's like, oh my god, you saved the Death Star. And he's like, what are you talking about? I never saved the Death Star. Turns There's no time travel in Star Wars. Where are you going with this? There is now. Imagine if they <laughs> magically introduced time travel, right? And they never blew up Alderaan to save all those people. They never blew up mm-hmm. Alderaan. But in return, none of the main characters ever went through experiences. Han Solo is just some old smuggler guy. Nothing you're saying, special. You're saying Han Solo's love story is more important than the lives of millions? <laughs> no! I'm saying from a movie <laughs> That's exactly what you're saying. From a movie point of view, we can't erase important events from main characters. But then you're imagining a time travel scenario where Han Solo's got his hand on a time travel button. And he says, Leia, if I press this button, I won't be in love with you anymore. But Han, you'll save the lives of millions. And he, and he hits it. the button and it fades to white. And that's the end of the movie. That would be a touching ending to story That's line. fantastic. Yeah, that's great. Except... That's what happened. And Therese you- hit the button. <laughs> Saved her relationship. <laughs> I'll never love you, Gamzia. Good. Hit the button. Oh, that's exactly what it is. <laughs> okay. I need to find a better example. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to go with Callcat's story here, not Terezi's. You're right. Terezi's... But Terezi was the one that hit the reset. Yeah. So I, I'd love for Callcat to the walk scratch, up. scratch, mm-hmm. it was Carcat. Even though both uh, times John did the retconning and John scratched the disc, it was the first time Carcat and the second time Terezi doing the reset. First time they found a way around to live second time they did it which they will i mean i really want call cat to go on a rant i didn't go against whisk and i really want him to say to john we had this entire thing with the squats and i spent so much work because we were scared to not exist john and yet here you are and you just did it because remember the line AR says, I'm scared to not exist. It seems to be a theme in Homestuck. Carcat wants the squats. Everyone wants the squats at the end of Act 5, Act 2 because they want to exist. Okay? 
They don't want to be wiped away with the video game. They don't want to know what happens with that. So you're telling me that this entire time, Jade, Kalkat, and Kanaya plan the scratch. They're going to do it. They're going to live. They're going to live this thing. they did with the window. And they did. And then, bam, just like that, they get wiped away by some newer selves who had uh-huh. encountered different things. Different selves. In Jade's case, a worse version of herself. Do worse. you see the problem? What do you mean worse? This Jade lived you- for three years crying. Are you saying worse emotional wise or worse written wise? Because from a writing perspective, what you're saying that sadness and conflict equals good writing. I think being alone for three years and having to suffer for that is more interesting than they derped around and played Ghostbusters for three years. You're right about this that. This Jade has a better story. So you're going by does that your, mean your thing? Does that mean this Jade's going to be a better character? Well, we start with Calliope. And pretty far, yes. That's that. Yeah, th- I love that scene. Mm-hmm. That was the story that I'm like, oh yes, we're going back to Calliope and Jade. I just want like Tim Dossie to focus the next few hundred pages on Jade. Just keep focusing on Jade. So yeah, in that, that case, not the real Jade. You don't like that Jade. You wait, want the old Jade. Back. Okay, okay, never mind. I take it back. This Jade's <laughs> cooler. This is a much better Jade because this Jade, you're white. Right. See, learn from a lot more. What I'm trying to say is that characters have to have conflict. Which is why this Jade is probably going to be better. Which is why this car cat's worse. Characters has to have, has to have conflict. Mm-hmm. There's a reason that Punk Whisker learned from her mistakes and this Whisker's still just as bad. Because Punk Whisker realized from her mistakes. See, Lord, what she did was bad. But Punk Whisker is just as bad too because she's too passive. Whisker's not supposed to be a passive character. This Whisker's finally realized her mistakes. Mm-hmm. What's the problem? The problem is that there's no problem. She's too good. What does that mean? That's She's fine. That's what happened because of Riska. Okay. Okay. I guess what I'm trying to say is that if Hussie Willie is taking this route I want, what he should do is he should have the story follow new Jade. I completely agree there. And the new Wetcon Jade is probably a better written Jade than the one on the media. Because the one on the media, all we did was dorp around, and from what we can tell, was in a horrible relationship with Dave Sprite. Mm-hmm. That never really got her anywhere. So, this is probably a much better Jade. And considering he had that much time to explore the planets, he probably knows everything there is to know about Suburb. So, this Jade's fine. I have no problem with this Wetcon at all. It's not the wet, it's not attached. It seems to be the problem I have is not being attached. <sighs> okay. I guess what I'm trying to say <laughs> is that the problem I have is not, oh, I only want the original characters. The problem is I like having characters that learn from their mistakes and have good writing. So this Jade is better. I will agree there. And I messed up my wording there, and it made me sound like the other Jade who played Ghostbusters was a much better <laughs> Jade. No, she wasn't. This is a better Jade, Okay. This Trezzy, I mean, she completed a story arc, so I guess in a way, so. This car cat, no! <laughs> Absolutely not! I mean, come on, we got that panel of him, we're holding WV and Dave, dancing around a circle, it's almost laughable. <laughs> Something's going this on here. Car smiled. Creepily, it's terrifying. His, I, remember car cats? You've read about car cat's story arc? What is target car cat's story arc about? What is his story arc? Carcat's story arc is about realizing that his friends mean more than than the video game or the condus. Mm-hmm. That in the end, it's his emotions that go above all. No matter he all he always puts people first in situations. That's how I would see it. And I would see that if Whisker was ever going to kill someone for the sake of the plan, Carcat would immediately stand up and stop her because he's knight of blood. Yes, protector of relationships. Yes. That's why I always see him like that. Mm-hmm. That's why I thought he would stand up against... That makes sense for his god tier. But his story arc... So it'd be his is god the tier. frog. The fact that he messed up the frog the first time around. But that's sort of all connected with his relationship with Jade and Kanaya at the end mm-hmm. of Act 5, Act 2. He tied it together really well. And that's going to happen again because they have to go meet Echidna now. So Echidna's going to... Uh, uh, explain things to Cart Cat. Explain Who knows, what? You may get your wish. They, they, Cart Cat may show up like, Echidna, you wanted to speak to me? She yes, Car Cat, I want to blow! She just blows him up. She just blows him up right there. Oh, you know what? This Car Cat might sacrifice himself to Echidna to save but his friends. And that's this, how you pay off the, this no, Car Cat. Because, no, because there's, this is the last Car Cat left. We, this one dies right at Car Cats. And we still haven't had one die next to Terezi yet. 
That has to happen. That has to happen. So he has to be with Terezi when he when he dies. And that could happen because this call cat never broke up with Terezi like in Mina Bound. Mm-hmm. But he was never with her in the first place. Oh, oh my god, this wet He never kind. had a crush on Terezi. Terezi no. was with Riska. He never went across and he never broke Carcat up. Was a See, it's man. just an entire arc deleted. And you can go, well, that arc didn't matter in the first place. Well, yes, it did. Because it was interesting and we learned a lot about the characters. But now saying it doesn't matter is dumb. You know? Remember, though, the only thing that matters is that John Egbert completes his beta video game. That's the only storyline that matters in all of Homestuck. Everything else no. is side characters. No. The side ending plots. to Homestuck is realizing that this video game doesn't matter. It's the only way to make a new universe. They'll They're probably not... end up creating it from the whole session, a new multiverse, using the whole multi, the whole paradox space as a giant session. But it's still John Egbert must play a video game. John Egbert's probably gonna die looking at the door and not walk through. He has to walk through. No, he's not gonna he walk does. through. He's gonna realize his friends battle Homestuck more than though. Started with him playing a video game. It has to end with him beating a video game. That's what it's you the think. Only way to By do the it. end of Homestuck, everyone's gonna be in the bubbles, and John's gonna be the slowly dying, looking at the door. When he finally whenever, realizes he can take this and rule as an evil god and be alone for the, thousands of years, wh- or he can let go and join his friends in the dream bubbles, and that's what matters. And what, he realizes no, that humanity no, is more important than the video that's game. That's not. That's not quite how it should be written. The way the writing is set up, the only w- the. The final section of whatever happens when they beat the game and John hits the door and the, the comic <laughs> fades to black. The last section has to be completely understandable to a reader who only has knowledge up to um, Nana's monologue. Because that's the ultimate payoff. The first story arc is, John, you must ascend the gates and defeat Skya and claim your prize. It must end with John raising through the gates, beating Skya and claiming his prize. I guess you're right about that. Because that's the whole over arc of the comic. It's been going on since Act 1. Oh, I know what you do. Everything else is closed within the of acts themselves. But the first moment and the last moment have to close in each other. Each other. Okay, here's what I got. It'll end on a... On a some remixed version of Noted Desolation Flash with John looking up at the sun. Here, here's what I'm thinking for ending story arcs. I'm thinking Call Cat is not... He's not going to go to the door. He's the one who's going to realize his friends not anymore and he doesn't need the ultimate reward. I'll say it. I, I would say that I wouldn't be surprised if Act 666 ends with every storyline finished except John's and then Act 7 is just a flash of John because he's the main guy. Like, it, it'd be similar to the King's oh, Cross scene here's what Harry I think. Potter. Here's what I think. But the only problem against that is that, yes, that's how it should be written, but hussy style of written writing isn't that, and the prom sooth epilogue was about Captain Snoop Dogg. <laughs> who, wasn't, who didn't show up till halfway through the comic. Okay, here's what I'm thinking. The end of Act 666 is going to be Cawcat realizing he doesn't need the ultimate reward. That's how you pay off it. Yeah. Because he's always gone about how this is all universe. He finally realizes... I don't need the ultimate ward. I already have it. And he looks at the beta kids. And he looks at all the trolls. And he realizes his friends battle more. Unless and I... then you cut to the last scene, which is John high-fiving Nana Spite for the last time. Like he high-fived the Holly Quinn Coral Spite. And then him finally saying goodbye to Nana and walking through the door at the end. There you go. How about that? Mm-hmm. I, unless Hussey splits Act 7 or breaks the act thing... Most of storylines will be wrapped up by 666. I think what you said is good. I think they said all be wrapped up by then. Yeah. The end of Act 6 would be the last story arc. That's it. Everything's done. Act 7 should be really slow, really mellow. Just a few flashes using, like, showtime. And John, and John talking to Nana something. for the last time. Maybe not Nana, because Jane is existing now. N- Nana's not that important. Huh? Oh, no, 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 no. It, it, it started with Nana explaining it and him high-fiving the Holy Quinn Coral. It's got to end it with him high-fiving with just, Nana for one last time. Nana didn't come in for an act and a half. It started with just John. Oh. Just a kid pl- with, pl- waiting for a video game. So it should end with a kid beating a video game. Okay. A young. The last page should be a, a, a man stands in his something. A man stands in his new universe. Yeah. It just so happens that today... A young god stands in his universe. Yeah. It so happens that today, the 25th of October, is this universe's birthday. Okay. Blah, 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 or something. And then we get that epilogue. Something really slow, but 666 is going to be the giant action scene, the troll culture payoffs and stuff. But Act 7 has to be very human, very desolate, just a very mellow moment. 
And then the end of the comic is gonna cut forward, years in the future, but not many, and it's gonna be the full Cantown built with WV in the Dream Bubbles. Maybe. And then it's gonna be WV walking as he gets alerted I... that a mysterious exile is sewed up, and Joey looks up, and then it cuts to black. There you no. go, Joey Clay. I have never been a there fan. You go. I've never been a fan of post suburb AU. Why no? I've no. always been bent what? on. They're gonna touch the door, and it's just gonna end. And he's not going to show it. Because you don't need to show it. The kids create a new universe. The end. You don't need to learn about it. But I, I feel like some of them at least have to learn that the new universe doesn't matter. I mean, Jade's still well because he's always isolated. She has to realize that she's... Uh, I don't know. Uh, I... I think it's bad for some of these characters. Like, it would be bad if it just ended with Fisca going, "Yeah, I get to be a god now and take all the power." She and said, call it she just said in the last update she didn't want to be. Okay. In the last update, she said no one should be a god because no one should have that kind of power. Okay. So what's she gonna do then during the end? She has a plan. She's gonna go beat up her punk self and do something, but we don't know what. Something with the but ultimate like juju. I understand John beating it, but it'd be like really bad if Callcat Jason went from going, finally I get my reward, and then he opens the door. Callcat can't open the door. That'd be bad. Mm, yeah, it would be. Callcat has to do something to help finish the game. Yes, he's got to he's he, do the fog bleeding. Because he failed his game so badly. The last thing he'll do is get the correct fog, and then finally realize the ultimate reward yeah, doesn't the, matter. He has, he has to be the one to make the Genesis frog that's sent back to Jade. Yes. Even though, for some weird reason, it's A.H. who does it. With the measuring stick. Because we know the measuring stick was left behind on the frog panel of the transport Why does Cock have the measuring the stick, The purifier. Then? then why does Cock have the measuring stick? Hmm? What do you mean? If Cock sends it back, then why does he have the measuring stick? Why doesn't he? Yeah. It's gotta be Cock That's how you infinite a story. Well, he can make the frog. <laughs> but it's somehow, I guess, gonna be A.H. who sends it back? A.H. is spying on Whiska. By the way, he's going to show up again in the new yeah, updates. It's going to be great. The big man right? stick was there. And... Hmm. That's a really important Homestuck item to just throw on the ground there. And yeah. it, it's take, they, they point out so, so much. It's a potential juju breaker, even though it got cut in half, so I don't know. It's a juju itself? No. No. No, it's not. Well, maybe. It could be it's a just juju. It's an object. It's, a, it's an important we object. We don't know what makes a juju yet. We haven't got that. Yeah. Just some things are. Most likely the soul theory that BYB came up with. No. No. Even that, that theory only covers jujus that have souls put in them <laughs> to give them magical properties. Oh, why? BYB still doesn't have a theory. No one does on where jujus come from in the first place. The only one confirmed is Cal, who started as a horror terror. Here we Not go. Not a horror terror, a t- chuckle voodoo. Oh, All right. Here we go. End of Homestuck Quack Theory. Let's, let's do this. End of Homestuck Quack Theory. Caliborn puts everybody's souls inside Juju's. Mm-hmm. Now, the only person that can seek out the souls and realize they're in there is someone who can understand oh, no. the emotion no, inside of them. Yes, yes, on the podcast now. Here we go. Callcat, the Knight of Blood. He seeks out the Juju's and realizes that his friends are in them. Okay, so he walks in. Caliborn's here on a throne with the Wooby slippers on. No one's getting your reference. We're torn to Oz! <laughs> the Disney Wizard of Oz film. It's a fantastic, really dark Wizard of Oz film where the people of Oz get torn to stone and the Scarecrow gets torn into... His soul gets trapped inside an object, a collection of they emeralds. All they all do. They all get their souls trapped in important magical objects that Dorothy has to seek out. That's... Come on. That's gonna be it. That's all finale right there. Call Cat is Dolphy. Mm-hmm. Then, then Call Cat picks up the cup of the carpenter. Yeah. They're like, this one. This is Dave, that piece of trash. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. What do you think? The return to Oz ending. Mm-hmm. You just want to see Calibor in the Ruby Slip was admitted. <laughs> Calibor is the Gnome King. Come on. Jade has, hasn't died and lost her slippers in this timeline. She probably will. Oh, God, she probably will, As the Wicked yeah. Witch, she has to lose her slippers. Preferably from a house falling on your head, but we already did that, so it'd be kind of redundant for it Well, to we've already again. seen this Jade die. Her soul gets whipped out by Caliborn into a house. That's exactly it. We don't know if that's the right one. There's a lot of theories that it's not them, that it's doomed versions, that it's the game over, de- dead ghosts, that it's just random corpses that have been puppeteered by Dirk with empty souls. Hmm. So, 
There's no telling. There's no telling if the claymation scene's even going to happen now that it's been retconned. Single Cherub says it, it's going to happen. Double Cherub says it doesn't have to happen. Huh. Hasn't it already happened? Exactly. So it doesn't, it doesn't need to be shown. It already it's, happened. It's a complete then, loop. It already happened and then st- was stopped from happening. So it doesn't have to happen anymore. Oh my god, it hurts my head. I mean, we saw the house juju. Mm-hmm. Who has it now? Aradia. Aradia, okay. Riska and Mina left it on her on the, in the, in the um, Mina's castle. Aradia would Aradia carry was. that around. Mm-hmm. It's got four dead souls in it for her. <laughs> so There's possibly two Aradias now. Because people in the bubbles aren't affected by retcon. So uh, Aradi and Salks weren't affected. And then another Aradi and Salk showed up. It's not the same? Uh, how about this? Is, the t- is Tavro Sprite the one from the Dream Bubbles or not? Um, the one uh, that flew off and middle fingered Whiska? Uh, like, uh, there's no way confirming one it's, or the other. It's 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 a different Tavros corpse, but that Tavros went to the Dream Bubble, so it's just possible. And they threw that in at Wedge Store as the other Most Tavros. Like, you know, you know, you know what? Ta- there's one line you can infer. Tavros said, "Wow, thanks for bringing me back, Riska, especially after killing me. It was a really nice way to, uh, uh, uh to, to say sorry." That implies that they never did the split the first time. So this is a new Tavros. And the okay. other Tavros is still out there. This isn't the Tavros that stood up for himself. Then what's the other Tavros this ta- do? To this Tavros' point of view, he fell off the balcony. from he, Vriska threw him off the edge. He died, was in the desert a few minutes, didn't meet John, just in the desert a few minutes. And then, ba- bam, he was Tavros Sprite. Okay. It didn't last very long. It didn't have the whole uh, Pupa Pan pirate storyline. No, that never happened. Yet it did happen. Yeah. At the same time. So we don't, we don't know about Game Over Ghosts, but there's at least Vriska, Mina, Aradia, Solix, Aradia, Solix, and Tavros. And John and Waxy and Woes and... Those were never confirmed to be shown. We don't know what happened. Well, those well, still, still the alpha selves, is what I'm saying. They still exist within the plot of Homestead. Maybe. Remember, Mina's trick to kill the god tears and then scratch the session before they could revive means it is possible to jip out some of the alpha people by having them the right amount of dead during a scratch so that they're just lost. What do you mean? Wait, I don't understand this at all. <laughs> what you're saying is that it's possible the game over selves never had the time to go in the dream bubbles? Yeah, that they died and then their corpses were retconned before their souls went to dream bubbles. Only the ones we've seen on screen, I believe, actually happened. The only thing going against that is that where did the where where was Dead Rose before she became Rose Sprite? Yeah, that she had to be somewhere. But you could argue that just because Nana didn't have a dream self, but she was able to be sprited. Jasper didn't have a dream self, but he was able to be sprited. But you know, Rose is a kid. Where where did, where she's a suburb player. Yeah, but where did the souls of of non players and retcon players go? But still able to be. Okay, by that logic, if you were to kill, if you, if <coughs> Lord English were to double kill someone, but you still had their corpse and threw it into a sprite, nothing would happen because their soul's gone. Hmm. But then where do non suburb player souls go? Hmm, where do non suburb player souls go? Is it still within the corpse? Is that, is that how it works? I don't know. Man, as Ash has still contained her soul. I mean, there's such emphasis that souls now are power. This is like a new thing. It's, souls are a new thing. But after... We, there's the, no such thing as magic, so their consciousness has to exist somewhere. Yeah. The and only problem is for non-suburb players. Like, this, would, this wouldn't even matter at all until that Caliborn scene with the house <laughs> that proved that the souls are important. Yeah. So they have to exist somewhere. Hmm. Souls have been confirmed since Dirk was shown up as as a hero of heart. Yeah, but the Caliborn thing said Caliborn says that they are important. They are. It's not magic. They do abide to certain laws. We don't know the laws. We don't know the laws. What we need is another Oadia scene, like the end of Act Five, Act Two, where he was with mm-hmm. Jade and Kanaya and explained everything there was about Dream Bubbles. Yeah. It was actually oh, you know what? It was Tavros, Jade, Kanaya, Oadia. I forgot. Before Tavros went into the desert, he went with Oadia and got the whole explanation on our uh, Dream Bubbles walk. So he knows a lot about the bubbles. Yeah. I forgot about that. He was there. He wakes up with the joust to his stomach still. He doesn't even know he's dead. Mm-hmm. It's where Dave says he's in hell now because he's with Tavros for all of eternity. Yeah, and, and that's the, that's the Will Tavros. Huh, 
I completely forgot. Like, I just... All I remembered was Tavlos dies, wakes up in the desert. Mm-hmm. But no. The desert even, even is his... It isn't his memory either. It's Hussey's, so... Yeah. I, well, it's his and Hussey's mixed. Huh? The desert. The desert is... Uh, uh, Tavros' his, land with Tavros's Hussies? Tavros' land with Hussey's horses. Okay. Okay. There's potentially some risk. I had to look over again to see what he put there. I mean about it, some risk in it. The bridges are there. Yeah. It's the bridges of the Whiskers bridge. High. It's a little pirate ship there. Yeah. It's a pirate ship and a bridge that leads into a desert. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Why are you mean Jade? <laughs> What's the callback to that? Oh, it doesn't need a call back. That was wrapped up. The whole Jade Spite storyline. Jade Spite's another character. Kind of got written off, but who really cares? <laughs> she was like a bad version of Jade in every way. She was an example of what Jade doesn't she want to be. She became Jade. Yeah. I... That, that is a, 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 an example of really mean Jade and really shy Jade mixing together to part perfect middle. Well, v- v- Riska. What Riska needs to do. Yeah. If the two Riskas were spied together, they might actually be a coherent player. Yeah, like okay. If the, like if the two Soluxes were mixed back together, they might be able to beat Suburb with someone that smart. Yeah. That wasn't corrupted in one way, too good or too bad. They need a perfect Solux, a perfect Riska. Mm. But they only yeah. have a kernel. Well, technically two kernels. You put the halves together. See, the a thing kernel is with two halves. The jade is that the two jades combined, along with her experiences on the sip and possibly exploring all the lands and having a guide to her powers, creates a character that is so unbelievably powerful that us has to just keep writing off. Not like wide off of the story, but like uh, season dream mobile. She's asleep. Mm-hmm. I can't have her awake. She'll just kill every villain in a few seconds. Yeah, Jade's too powerful for green sun power. She has to be really, really far in paradox but space. Remember, the imps are also green powered, and his excuse with them is just don't mention them, and the fans will forget. That's a poor idea. Where are the imps? Where are the imps? Give us the imps. <laughs> Give the imps, hussy. Let's cut to a whole imp segment. The Condis has summoner power. She could potentially mind control an entire unlimited spawning army of green sun powered creatures. And you're everyone's worried about the one Beck Noir that's coming in. What if what if that's what Whiska's not realizing? What if she does have that? What if John goes, Oh right, let's beat up the Condis over and over again? Well that, that's going and into then, my old twenty thirteen theory. And then of all the imps are there. The Lord of the Rings ending with ten different armies fighting each other. That Hussey doesn't really have enough time to set up now. Oh. He kind of does. It's Casey's army. It was I had Casey's army, Tavros with the Imps army, Condis with all the Jacks, and uh, WV with the carapaces. and WV with the carapaces, and then there's a few extra ones like AH would show up with an army of fan trolls who die in one page. Spade stick with the felt. Spade stick with the felt, and then Hussey with the fan trolls die in one page. You really want that to happen? I want that to you? happen. I'm going to show up. Is Hive Swap not enough? I mean, come on. Yeah, the hundred fan trolls, the Hive Swap is going to pay that off. And who knows how many Prongle people he'll sneak in that aren't real game NPCs. Yeah. Maul and Brando. Where's Rando? He's going to sneak. Rando. Maul and Brando's going to be in the game. It, all I want is Hive Swap is one object. And I don't want a character. I don't want craziness. I don't want major plot points. I want one object to appear in it somewhere in the game. Hmm. The Rando top. The Rando top. It automa- all it does is connect to Prongle and automatically Rando people. That's all I want. I just want a Rando top. Why so, so much to ask? When we come back, where does Hussy go? It's going to be Dirk and Dave. Hey, sup, as the Dave Sprite call back. And that's it. So what are we going to get? Do you really think we'll get another 15 pages of Strider talking? It is, yes. Okay. The, the, he might jump to Vriska, but that's too exciting right now. He's trying to make this the, the last mellow part of the comic before it ends. Once again, from a writing point, it'd be more interesting to follow Vriska, but it's still a video game parody, and we're at the final resting place, the last save point before the boss, so we have to remain in this very quiet, mellow area until the boss strikes first. Oh. Well, until the players willingly say, we have rested, we have saved our game, we are ready to continue, hit the button, all hell breaks loose. Okay. But, like, even if Vriska does go in, it's not gonna be a giant flash, it's just gonna be whole walking through the bubbles trying to find Vriska. I mean... It's very, very obvious he's not going to immediately warp to pump whisk, punk whiskers. He's going to end up somewhere gonna, else. Uh, yeah, uh, he's going to end up in someone's bubble. Yeah, she's going to mess with some rando ghost characters. Be really com- comedic, uh, and then she's going to meet up with Punk Vriska, and they're going to do the mini strife scene where they're dashing at yeah, each other with their weapons drawn. And Mina's going to be in the background instead of Hussy, and Mina's going to have a little thought bubble of the two Vriskas making out. Yeah, you can't have two of the same characters meet without the makeout panel. But where is Vriska going to end up? Is my question. 
Please, please let Wiska bonds in on Solix Nepeda, Fefui. Mm-hmm. She well, might end up at like Tavros's house or something with yeah. the other Tavros. And that tab was going to be like, you're back. I told you to get out. <laughs> and Riss is like, oh, this is some other Tavros. It's going to be the Pupa Pan one that flew off. Yeah, this is the, 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 the original canon Tavros. Uh, imagine the original canon Tavros when he said, I'm leaving. He really is leaving. He's got like a house now with a family. Yeah. Uh, he's just a normal he's dude. He's some doomed Arania. They have little ghost babies. How does that, and Riss is like, how does that even work? <laughs> And he's just had a normal life. He's got all these pixels from different vacations they've had. Uh, uh-huh. He's just like a normal family guy. <laughs> he's wearing his Hawaiian suit from Paradox Space. He's got space. a beard. <laughs> yeah. He's like, he's cutting logs outside. <laughs> he's lumberjack now. Yeah. He's just an average generic family guy. And he's just That's like, fabulous. oh, hey, I thought you told you to get out of here all those years ago. He's got like a deep voice and he's all buff. Hey, I'm Tavros. <laughs> Aren't you supposed to be like a pirate and kill us all? Like, no, I started a family. <laughs> Me and Arania and my kids are just younger doom selves of us. Kind of creepy. <laughs> oh, that's creepy. <laughs> that that would be great. Just let's cut to that. This is our angsty teenage son, doomed car cat. <laughs> Urgh, I like train teenage troll movies. I put a code in my computer and it blew up and killed me. Wow. <laughs> um. Call Cat blew up his computer. He knew about loading this from then, didn't he? Because he, uh, he, put the, he put the code in. They didn't know what it did. Solox wor- worried about that code for years before it, they, he, knew, he knew about it. Okay, so Call Cat knew nothing of loading this with the code. He still doesn't. What do you mean he still doesn't? He mentioned loading this directly with Jay. When? Oh, if, you, if you're going into the creature of pure void thing, that's never explained. Why does he say that? For a first hand, okay, this is explicitly those... on screen, Riska just told Carcat about Lord English right now. Yeah. This is his first time hearing about it. In Act 5, Act 2, he says to Jade, Looking through the fourth wall will tell you truths about reality worse than the creature that turns imagination into pure void. Yeah, and that's and then Jade though. says, I don't think I'm quite following with this Carcat. You've theorized over that for years now. You just had to put it aside till Hussie decides it's time to bring uh, it. Up. Just like the Genesis frog. I know. Just like Mini Maple Hoof. Just don't worry about it. Worry about the small time but, theories. The big time ones Hussie will explain in time. I know, in the I know. Four to eight hundred pages he has left. But, like, Jade even says afterwards, I don't think I'm following. And then Carcat says, You don't have to follow. Mm-hmm. Like, he's real serious about, let's move on quickly. Yes. What is it he's covering up? I don't understand. And I really, really like the theory that he's Caliborn's OC, and he uh-huh. put him in reality. I was just talking with Luna. I want to see a scene, a callback to the Jade Foy and WV Nightmare scene, where WV becomes Becca, mm-hmm. of Car Cat becoming Caliborn's OC. Wouldn't these ears suit you? You know, that whole segment. Mm-hmm. I want to see another WV dream sequence. Which, by the way, well, do we know what that sequence means now? It, it means Vriska's going to do something and WV's going to put on the ring. And the comic's finally going in the direction <laughs> that might finally happen These all these thousands of pages later. We just got to get past the slow part. Yeah. Which is, what, the Strider Union? That's it? Then things, don't get, things get on the wall? Or? Pretty much. Unless he really does take the time to show them putting the portals into place and show them flying to their positions to start the battle and... Do a re- I could see them doing another really long John Jake chat and then having a tender moment before the fight. Yeah, but he wants to end it. Mm-hmm. He doesn't want to go on all these scenes. I don't know. It's just... It's really hard to know where he's taking the comic. And I hope he's taking it somewhere good. Okay? Mm-hmm. I hope he's taking it somewhere that will go, oh my god, that's that's a really great way to take it, Hussie. I think that about sums it yeah. all up. I mean, there's nothing new we can now but wait. <laughs> and then get all Strider chats. Now, are you sure? Because you guys said, oh, there's nothing to talk about in this episode. <laughs> there really wasn't. That was um, uh, a lot of, of just random theorizing. Yeah. And being upset that the Reddit guys don't like our random theorizing. Yeah, I noticed the Reddit guys have a voice like this. Yeah. Uh, they sit in their basements. I don't think that's the Reddit guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh Worst episode ever of 91 Reasons. <laughs> I think that your theory, your theories are not very sound. You're both banned from the Android's dungeon. <laughs> all right, well, you want to wrap it up? All right. Go ahead. That's, that, that's all that Willie has to say on the matter. That's, that's it. That's all, folks. That's it, huh? Yeah. Um, 
if you want to help out with the show, please leave us a five star view. It is the best way to support it. We already said that. <laughs> There's only one thing left to say. Thank. Well, I'm the voice. I'm Jeff Tucker. I am joined by, as always, my Homestuck experts, Austin, Luna, and together we are Ninety One Reasons. <laughs> for listening to 91 Reasons. Please subscribe and leave a review on iTunes. Find us on Facebook. Is anyone even still listening?